retail banking products. We all know the customer services provided by the retail banks and the RBI's rules and legislations regarding the protection of customers. The relationship between the bankers and the customers is not the same like before. The market has undergone a sea of change. The customers have become more demanding today. In this lesson, we will explain the various types of deposits, the opening and closing of accounts and other related factors, define the meaning of loans and advances, types of loans and advances, define the need of money products of banks in present day environment and explain the types and characteristics of money products. After going through this presentation you should be able to explain deposit account, current account and term deposits, recurring deposit, loans and advances, financial inclusion, priority sector and securitization of retail loans types of money products, characteristics of money products and concept of product management. A deposit account is a current account, savings account or other type of bank account at a banking institution that allows money to be deposited and withdrawn by the account holder. A saving fund account may be opened by a properly introduced individual singly or jointly minors of the age of 10 years and above and minors under natural or legal guardianship. Any government department or body or agency in respect of grants or subsidies released for implementation of schemes sponsored by central government subject to production of an authorization from respective government departments to open savings fund account. X for example, District Rural Development Agency. Member of Parliament, Local Area Development Scheme, Khadi and Village Industries Board, Agriculture Produce Market Committee. The minimum balance to be maintained in the account may differ from one bank to the other since this area has been deregulated by the apex monetary body, the Reserve Bank of India. The interest is calculated on the minimum balance from the 10th to the last day of the month. An account may be transferred from one branch to another branch of the bank, generally free of charge on written request of the depositor. In case the account is closed within a year, except on the account of death of the account holder, banks levy certain charges as per their internal guidelines. When an account is opened in the name of two or more persons, all of them must sign the account opening form and affix their photograph. The account will be operated in accordance with the instructions contained therein. A current account may be opened by individuals singly or jointly, partnership firm, company, association, institution, trust, society, etc. According to the Indian Bank's Association Model Deposit Policy, an illiterate or blind person cannot open a current account. Minor in their own name can also not open a current account as per the current practice of the banks. It is a running account in which customers are free to make any number of transactions, subject to maintenance of minimum balance in the account. The target group of current account is one of business segment. Term deposits refer to such deposits which are placed with the bank for a definite time period, although the customers are free to withdraw their deposit as per their requirements. Banks may accept term deposits for a minimum period of 7 days, 1 year in case of NRE deposits, and maximum for a period of 10 years. Banks may accept deposit for periods exceeding 10 years in the event of any orders from the competent court of law. Banks may offer differential interest rates on wholesale domestic term deposits of Rs 15 lakhs and above. For deposits below Rs 15 lakhs, banks should offer uniform rates for the same maturity. Banks should not discriminate in matter of interest paid on deposit except for resident senior citizens and other segments as and when notified by the government.
The recurring deposit account is an account in the bank where an investor deposits a fixed amount of money every month for a fixed tenure. Any individual singly or jointly or a minor of 10 years and above in his own name otherwise under guardianship, HUF, a firm, a club, association, educational institution, municipality, panchayat, society, trust, etc. can open the account. As per the practices followed by the banks, by and large, it can be opened for an installment of rupees 100 or more or in multiples thereof for a period ranging from 6 months to 120 months in multiples of 3 months. Since this is a deregulated area, the scheme of one bank need not be the same with that of the other. There is no upper limit on investing. The rate of interest varies between 7 and 11 percent depending on the maturity period. Premature withdrawal is also permissible but penalty is levied. TDS is not applicable on recurring deposits. Term loan refers to the amount borrowed by one person from another. The amount is in the nature of loan and refers to the sum paid to the borrower. Loan is the amount borrowed from the bank. The nature of borrowing is that the money is dispersed and recovery is made in installments. A demand loan is a loan which is repayable on demand by the bank. In other words, it is repayable at short notice. Medium and long term loans are called term loans. Term loans are granted for more than a year and a repayment of such loan is spread over a longer period. Cash credit is a flexible system of lending under which the borrower has the option to withdraw the funds as and when required and to the extent of his needs. Under this arrangement, the banker specifies a limit of the loan for the customer known as the cash credit limit up to which the customer is allowed to draw. Overdraft facility is more or less similar to cash credit facility. Overdraft facility is the result of an agreement with the bank by which a current account holder is allowed to draw over and above the credit balance in his or her account. Overdraft facility is generally granted by a bank on the basis of a written request by the customer. Apart from sanctioning loans and advances, discounting of bills of exchange by bank is another way of making funds available to the customers. Bills of exchange are negotiable instruments which enable debtors to discharge their obligation to the creditors. Such bills of exchange arise out of commercial transactions, both inland trade and foreign trade. Cashing or trading a bill of exchange at less than its par value and before its maturity date. The cash, thus realized, varies according to the number of days until maturity and the risk involved. Financial inclusion has been a focus of attention in recent times. However, the facts reveal the real and somewhat uncomfortable picture. The increase in the number of branches has not answered the needs of the farmers and reaching the unbanked population to enable inclusive growth is a serious problem today. Branchless banking could be the big step towards providing easy financial access to the poor people and achieving financial inclusion. Committee reports submitted to the Indian government call for access to financial services including credit to be raided to be raised to 50% by 2012 and 100% by 2015. Such a mammoth task at hand can only be achieved by an earnest technology inclusion which can be achieved through branchless banking. Branchless banking is the concept of providing banking services outside the conventional bank branches by either using information and communication technology services or third-party organizations. Achieving total financial inclusion is a concern of most countries, yet it is very geographical in nature as it largely depends on a country's financial policy and its financial industry regulations. The financial world has witnessed several branchless banking pilot projects trying to examine the various business models that could be used to ensure the most proper implementation 
and sustenance of branchless banking systems. The business correspondent model allows the bank to use third-party financial institutions to handle account opening, transaction management and other financial services. Regulations from the Reserve Bank of India emphasize that transactions should be visible in the bank's books within 24 hours. The use of mobile devices for payment and banking services can be the best suited model for branchless banking in India. Accordingly, the broad categories of priority sector for all scheduled commercial banks as per draft guidelines of RBI January 2007 on lending to priority sector are as under. Direct finance to agriculture shall include short, medium and long term loans given for agriculture and allied activities directly to individual farmers, self-help groups, SAGs or joint liability groups JLGs of individual farmers without limit and to others such as corporates partnership firms and institutions up to rupees 20 lakhs for taking up agriculture or allied activities indirect finance to agriculture shall include loans given for agriculture and allied activities direct finance to small enterprises shall include all loans given to small manufacturing enterprises engaged in manufacture or production, processing or preservation of goods, and small service enterprises engaged in providing or rendering of services. Other small business or service enterprises shall include small business, retail trade, professional and self-employed persons, small road and water transport operators and all other service enterprises as per the definition given in section 1 appended. Indirect finance to SSI includes financing of agencies involved in assisting the decentralized sector in the supply of inputs and marketing of outputs of artisans, village and cottage industries, provision of credit and other financial services and products of very small amounts not exceeding rupees 50,000 per borrower to the poor either directly or indirectly through a SAG or JLG mechanism or any intermediary. Education loans include loans and advances granted to only individuals for educational purposes up to rupees 10 lakhs for studies in India and rupees 20 lakh for studies abroad and do not include those granted to institutions. Securitization in India is new in origin but has seen deals that exhibit both diversity as well as market maturity. The law securitization, asset reconstruction and enforcement of security interest act emerged in 2003 though the law deals with enforcement of security interest as its focal point and has not been used at all for securitizing transactions. There are several types of money products provided by retail bank for convenience of the customer. These are a credit card is a small plastic card issued to users as a system of payment. It allows its holder to buy goods and services based on the holder's promise to pay for these goods and services. A debit card is a plastic card that provides an alternative payment method to cash when making purchases. It can be called an electronic check as the funds are withdrawn directly from either the bank account or from the remaining balance on the card. Check card is a card issued by a bank or building society which guarantees the payment of a check to the recipient and which supports a check for obtaining cash, both up to a stated value. It can also typically be used to withdraw money from an ATM. A charge card is a plastic card that provides an alternative payment to cash when making purchases in which the issuer and the card holder enter into an agreement that the debt incurred on the charge account will be paid in full and by due date, usually every 30 days, or be subject to severe late fees and restrictions on card use. Smart card has an integrated circuit with microprocessor chip embedded in the card for identification purposes. 
Smart Card can also perform calculations and maintain records. DMAT refers to a dematerialized account. If customer wishes to have securities in DMAT mode, he needs to indicate the name of the depository and also the depository participants with whom he has depository account. Durability is critical for money to perform the related functions of medium of exchange and store of value. People are willing to accept an item in payment for one good because they are confident that the item can be traded at a later time for some other good. An item works as a medium of exchange precisely because it stores value from one transaction to the next. And this requires durability. Divisibility is second characteristic. It means money can be divided into small increments that can be used in exchange for goods of varying values. Transportability third characteristic means that money can be easily moved from one location to another when such movement is needed to complete exchanges. Plastic money in the form of credit and debit card is quite convenient to carry anywhere. Non-counterfeitability fourth characteristic means that money cannot be easily duplicated. A given item cannot function as a medium of exchange if everyone is able to print up, whip up or make up a batch of money anytime they want. Plastic money possesses good value in this regard as it is less risky because the money is transferred instantly from the customer's account to the seller's account with the purchase. Plastic money is absolutely liquid as the transaction is done instantly. The increasing competitiveness of the financial services market, especially retail banking sector, means that the banks must manage products for optimum growth and differentiate their product propositions to succeed. Retail product management is incorporated at various levels within a retail organization. To build stronger customer loyalty, banks need improved customer knowledge to develop products and deliver services targeted at specific market segments, resulting in more direct marketing, sales and service tactics. Customer loyalty that drives organic growth can only be built through a consistent customer experience. The need to revitalize a company's portfolio of offerings happens in every industry. Banks traditional and appropriate prudence can easily be expressed as conservatism. Stringent regulation militates against risk-taking and inflicts caution in the process of developing and implementing new ideas. Positioning is a concept that has evolved to help a bank deal in retail to understand their own standing relative to their competitor as perceived by their customers. A generalist approach to product management is to provide a solution to as many consumers needs as possible. It takes the view that by identifying needs that most often arise and are most easily met and providing non-complex solutions to such needs a large enough proportion of consumer needs will be met to make such a product offering viable. Segmentation has always been a key part of marketing. Sorting customers into appropriate segments allows business and marketing types to filter ideas, glean intelligence, set prices and decide what to offer and what to toss. Market segmentation is the segmentation of markets into homogeneous groups of customers each of them reacting differently to promotion, communication, pricing and other variables of marketing mix. Customer segmentation is the subdivision of a market into discrete customer groups that share similar characteristics. Feedback of the customer is also very significant for the product management of the retail banks. For the purpose of retail banks getting direct customer feedback is good and using it to drive product requirements and feature enhancements will certainly raise the business of the bank. Brand in simple terms is an accumulation of emotional and functional associations. Brand is a promise that the product will perform as per customers expectations. Promotions and schemes have become a vital tool for the retail bankers 
and its importance has been increasingly significant over the years. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. A saving fund account may be opened by a properly introduced individual singly or jointly. Minors of the age of 10 years and above and minors under natural or legal guardianship. Right or wrong? Right. Smart card has an integrated circuit with microprocessor chip embedded in the card for identification purposes. Right or wrong? Right. Segmentation also allows successful companies to produce just the right things to address the needs of different slices of the market. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. A deposit account is a current account, savings account or other type of bank account at a banking institution that allows money to be deposited and withdrawn by the account holder. A current account may be opened by individuals singly or jointly, partnership firm, company, association, institution, trust, society, etc. According to the Indian Bank Association model, deposit policy, an illiterate or blind person cannot open a current account. Minor in their own name can also not open a current account as per the current practice of the banks. Term deposits refer to such deposits which are placed with the bank for a definite time period, although the customers are free to withdraw their deposit as per their requirements. The recurring deposit account is an account in the bank where an investor deposits a fixed amount of money every month for a fixed tenure. The term loan refers to the amount borrowed by one person from another. The amount is in the nature of a loan and refers to the sum paid to the borrower. A demand loan is a loan which is repayable on demand by the bank. In other words, it is repayable at short notice. Financial inclusion has been a focus of attention in recent times. However, the facts reveal the real and somewhat uncomfortable picture. Regulations from the Reserve Bank of India emphasize that transactions should be visible in the bank's books within 24 hours. Direct finance to agriculture shall include short, medium and long-term loans given for agriculture and allied activities directly to individual farmers, self-help groups, SHGs or joint liability groups, JLGs, of individual farmers without limit and to others such as corporates, partnership firms and institutions up to rupees 20 lakhs for taking up agriculture or allied activities. Indirect finance to agriculture shall include loans given for agriculture and allied activities. DMAT refers to a dematerialized account. If customer wishes to have securities in DMAT mode, he needs to indicate the name of the depository and also the depository participants with whom he has depository account. Durability is critical for money to perform the related functions of medium of exchange and store of value. Divisibility is second characteristic. It means money can be divided into small increments that can be used in exchange for goods of varying values.